The Griffer Survivor Extreme is a marked improvement over the old Griffin Survivor Extreme, which was just a rebranded Griffin Summit. And as I said in my Survivor Strong review, I really like Griffin's updated line of cases. But between the Strong and the Extreme, I still like the buttons on the Survivor Strong. But if you are rougher with your devices, this is the only one of the very few, if not the only one case that I can think of right now that offers the maximum amount of protection for your iPhone. I'm not talking about the Forticore that they use in the case. Forticore. Forticore. Honestly guys, I would choose this case over the Ballistic Tough Jacket Max as well as the Autobox Defender. And we'll buy reviews A, Monty and I, this puppy, base all our reviews on actual usage. And honestly, Monty and I do get bored of reviewing cases, especially when cases don't change. But when a new lineup shows up, Monty gets filled with giddy joy. This is Monty filled with a giddy joy. The Griffin Survivor Extreme is a slick looking case. There are a variety of different layers to the case and everything just fuses so well together. My case does have a seam at the bottom, but you know, it's apart from everything else with all the stuff going on, eh, eh, I can overlook that. The iPhone sits in what looks like a polycarbonate frame that slides into a larger case like Griffin basically for a cord all over. The Survivor Extreme is actually a very bulky case. It doesn't look like it, but it is. It does okay from a thickness standpoint, but this case will almost add 10 millimeters, so much millimeters to the iPhone's width. The back of the case is recessed a bit, so it does prevent the matte finish on the back from scratching as much, and it also does help from the handling as it makes the entire case feel a little thinner than it actually is. Now I will note that this matte finish deals better with fingerprints than the Survivor Strong. I don't know why this finish isn't on this case because as you can tell, my fingerprints are all over this product. A little gross. Now the texture of this case is what makes this product shine. The main edge of the case has a series of diamond shaped bumps that makes the case easy to grip. Now behind the main edge, the case has a matte finish that has a bit more of an aggressive finish than the stuff that you find on the Griffin Survivor Strong. And surprisingly enough, this black piece on the back also has a matte finish to it. So basically you've got an entire lateral section of the case edge sitting in your palm and it's got a lot of texture to it. It's just really, really nice. Now when I first started using this case, I was mildly annoyed at the fact that this front bumper over here was extremely slick, but because of the extreme width of this product, your fingers don't actually touch that front uh, slick bumper. So, you know, Griffin, smart. Honestly, using this case with one hand with my giant iPhone 11 Plus is very, very doable. And the coolest thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about all the other pieces and the textures is that the main texture area, there's a fade to it. I've never seen an iPhone case have a fade to the grippy texture on their on the product. Like, it, this is... It's really not that... But it's 12.30 at night. I've had some drinks, so... Yeah! In terms of accessing my iPhone, the only issue I had was with the buttons. They are quite stiff. It does take a bit of effort to press through the edge, but that's kind of a trade-off because, well, when you have a tough case, stuff is going to be harder to use. And that's really a shame because between the Defender and the Tough Jacket Max, this case has the worst buttons between the three. Access on the screen wasn't an issue despite the extreme width. Camera access was fine and the port access was fine as well. Except for the annoying port flap or the very useful port flap depending on how dirty your iPhone gets. Now when it comes to protection, the Griffin Survivor Extreme is supposedly going to offer your device with 15 feet worth of drop protection. I'll be honest with you, I've got more confidence that this product's going to protect my iPhone from a 15 foot drop than the uh, Gear 4 Holborn that I just dropped 13 feet, not even 13 feet, like 6 feet and the screen protector just died on it. Um, this case looks and feels tough, Gear 4 stuff, not as much. But what about the platoon? Yeah, it's not that great either. Now the reason why I believe that this product is gonna be as tough as it is, 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 is that it's so big, it's so bulky. The wider it is, the more protection the case is gonna offer your device. And Scipio and Griffin all use this material called Forticore. Not all use, only like the entire Griffin lineup does, but only in Scipio, one of Incipio cases does, so you know. Sorry. Which, as I mentioned in the Survivor Strong video, if you go to their website, will assume that you're not smart enough to understand anything scientific. And honestly, they're not wrong because I don't even understand what the phrase simultaneous cushions and shock absorption are in full force means. That's not even a sentence, I don't think. Vortical, vortical, vortical. The stand-up protection features deals with the environmental protection that the case will offer. Honestly, there are not many iPhone 11 cases that offer 
offer dust covers for the speaker grills. These speaker grill dust covers were way more popular back in like the iPhone 6s and 7s, but lately, yeah, not often. The only case that I could think in that I've reviewed in recent memory that has this is the terrible, terrible life proof next. So if you work in a dusty, tough environment, this is gonna be the case to get between the Tough Jacket Max and the Defender. Honestly, the only product that would be better for dust would be a waterproof case, but that kind of sucks the joy out of using your device's screen. And when it comes to glass protection, you know, the stuff on the front as well as the tiny stuff on the back, the case edges high enough that you can use a decent screen protector with it. Like I've got a Flowlab 2.5D. It won't work with 3D screen protectors or 3D screen protectors that are case friendly. It only will work with 2.5D screen protectors. So your OtterBox Amplify that's not 3D as well as your Zag Glass Elite that's not 3D. This 2.5D uh, Flowlab screen protector, it's double tempered. And this thing fits this device and this case like a glove. Like you can't even and tell that there is a gap between the screen protector and the case. Like it is just so slick. I am mildly disappointed that I'm probably going to have to break the screen protector on this product. I've been going through so many screen protectors lately. Now when it comes to drop protection, my only concern is that the frame that the iPhone sits in, this actually comes off quite easily from my perspective. That's not good. But I guess we're gonna find out how terrible it is when we drop it a ton. considered I'm surprised the uh, screen protector didn't peel off more which means that the corners are actually quite rigid so one of the first drops the screen protector started pulling back the last big drop the screen protector started pulling back but being able to like it's not peeling at it it didn't get underneath the screen protector it didn't crack pretty surprising I'm uh, I'm impressed Griffin so that's all I got for this video. Questions, comments, leave them down there. I will be doing the Griffin Survivor Endurance next, and I really like that case. Maybe even a little bit more than the Survivor Strong. Um, I do like it more than this Endurance. Again, buttons, not great. And like, I work in an office, so I don't need the port cover. I don't need the dust covers, but, you know, whatever. Excited to do that review. It's also got some neat colors. First time watching my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe, producing content a lot lately. It's been a daily video. That's probably gonna change fairly soon, I think, because I think I'm hamstringing myself when it comes to daily videos and YouTube's algorithm, but we'll figure that out pretty soon here. If you're finding this review useful and you're, and you're thinking about getting the Griffin Survivor Extreme, well, get it through my Amazon links. This channel is unsponsored, which is why it's awesome, but that also means I need your guys' help in order to sustain it as well as grow it. So buy it through my links. But if you are rougher with your rougher, 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 with your devices. <laughs> the Survivor Extreme is a bulky case. Bulky case. This case has the worst jack. What, worst jacket? <laughs> you falling asleep yet? Because I'm about to. So I've been like cleaning stuff up while waiting for the food to show up. And I was like, man, I've got a lot of ballistic cases um, that are just filled with stuff. And like my pocket right now is just filled with all like the B-Shock X90 spare bumpers that I've been pulling out of the boxes and recycling. A bunch of weird stuff you would expect to find in a child's uh, collection of toys. It's like just a bunch of colorful nubs. But that also means I need your help to assist. But that all.
I didn't say you could go. We're not done our work yet. Yeah, no, we're done. If you're ever hungry, Val, there's half a tiny pizza in the freezer that I'll leave up there for a few days. Hmm? <laughs> I can try some. That's totally going in the bloopers. <laughs>